My name is Matthew Morris, Associate Professor of Biology at Ambrose University. Uh, along with my colleagues, John Mee at Mount Royal University, Mindy Summers and Sean Rogers at the University of Calgary, and Morgan Kwan here at Ambrose University, uh, we were able to send out graduate and undergraduate schools from our different institutions and had them act as genetic detectives. Our students went to grocery stores and restaurants all around the city of Calgary. They photographed various fin fish and shellfish products, particularly the labels that those products were marketed under. Uh, and then they preserved tissues from those products for genetic testing. We wanted to know, is what you bought what you got? That is, were students buying, for example, what they believed to be uh, red snapper, a wild marine species, but were actually eating tilapia, a freshwater aquaculture product? The answer was overwhelmingly yes. In just under 350 samples of fin fish, we found salmon sushi, that was actually rainbow trout, tuna, that was actually escalar, a fish nicknamed the laxative of the sea for uh, reasons I will let you imagine. Uh, we found fish sold under market names that were so unusual, it was virtually impossible to guess what those creatures might be. We even found creatures like punctuated snake eel that are not included on the Canadian Food Inspection Agency's fish list of what can legally be sold in Canada. All in all, we found about one in three fin fish products were mislabeled. Now that's if we accept sort of all forms of mislabeling. If we get rid of sort of semantic issues, things like you buy freshwater eel that turns out to be American eel, well, freshwater eel is not technically a legal label for American eel, but the consumer wasn't really hoodwinked in that case. If we remove those examples of what we called semantic mislabeling, we still have one in five uh, uh, products were substituted. That is, one in five products were not what they claimed to be. Now, most of this was already known for other cities across North America, although it was interesting that landlocked Calgary fared about as well as coastal cities like Vancouver or Halifax. But where our contribution becomes truly unique is that first, we were able to compare mislabeling rates in fin fish to those in shellfish. Students sampled over 100 bivalves, cephalopods, crabs, shrimp, and the like, uh, and found the same results, about one in three products were mislabeled, about one in five products uh, were the result of product substitution. The second unique feature of this project was that we took a look at legal ambiguity in naming practice. In Canada, a variety of fish can be sold under the same name. A consumer could buy something called cod and that something could legally be Pacific cod, which is globally doing okay, uh, but it could also be Atlantic cod, which in Canada has experienced huge population collapse. Tuna could legally be applied to 14 different species of fish. We wondered if legal ambiguity was related to mislabeling. Uh, after all, you know, if, if a vendor can legally sell a product under a variety of different species names that should uh, protect them if they don't know the exact identity of that species. But in fact, there was no relationship. Products with ambiguous market names were just as likely to be mislabeled as those with precise market names. But perhaps even more significantly, we took a look at the conservation status of the species identified through DNA barcoding. We found that mislabeling tended to hide species of conservation concern, but, and that was no real surprise, legal ambiguity was even more important for predicting whether a product would contain a species of conservation concern or not. If someone bought a mammal sandwich, they would want to know if that sandwich contained a cow or panda bear. Yet in Canada, you can legally buy tuna and be eating something that could be on the brink of extinction and not even know it. So our study suggests one way that Canadians can better protect fishes. Although we will never know if we're eating what we think we're eating because mislabeling is running rampant, we need genetic tools, uh, and unfortunately, we can't DNA test our meal every time we're about to eat. So although we can't know if we're eating what we think we're eating, we can know whether a product has been precisely or ambiguously labeled. And our study suggests that you are far less likely to be eating a creature of conservation concern if you're purchasing a product with a precise species name. So thank you very much. We uh, hope you enjoy the paper.